Hello and welcome to Archives and Records Simplified. These videos are aimed at people looking for basic knowledge about archives and records management, although at times I will also touch slightly on information and library science. These videos are designed to provide bite-sized chunks, which means that almost every video will be less than 15 minutes. These videos are honestly for everyone and comments and suggestions are always more than welcome. About me, Sean McMillan, I'm an archivist based in London, and you can learn mo more about me via my LinkedIn profile, to which there is a link posted below. And I'll also post a transcript and notes also if you struggle at any point to understand my accent. And lastly, if you enjoy these videos, I would be extremely grateful if you could kindly like, subscribe and share. Thanks again. Okay, so this video is about the Business Archives Council, or the BAC. Okay, so the first thing that I actually spotted about the BAC is that they're actually quite an old organisation. They were founded in 1934, which is, um, in my experience at working in archives, a lot of these types of organisations are quite recent. Um, so it's quite interesting and quite refreshing to see one that's a lot older and has that sort of continuity, which I think is quite cool. Um, and it's important to note the BAC have roughly speaking three main objectives. Now, before I go into this, I would say that the best place to look for more information would be their website, which includes a lot more detail than this video, uh, but this video will give a sort of general overview of who they are and what they do. So the BAC's three main objectives are to promote the preservation of business records of historical importance, supply advice and information on the administration and management of both archives and modern records. So there's also a records management aspect to what they do and to encourage interest in the history of business in Britain. Um, it's important to note that the BAC are a registered charity and they derive their income from the subscription of members, which includes librarians, archivists, records managers, historians and business people more generally. Um, also from looking at their website, they also have um, a constitution, which I think is quite cool. And this can be seen online. So yeah. Okay, so in terms of their activities, um, again, the first thing I would recommend is to look at their website, which offers a lot more detail. However, a few things that caught my eye and which I'd like to note briefly. Uh, so first of all, business archives at risk. Um, this is for situations where business archives are at risk of being lost. So this might be from an impending liquidation, for example. Um, the BAC refer people to contact the crisis management team for business archives for advice, but the BAC will consider providing funding if merited. And this might be for something like urgent cleaning or decontamination. You would have to lodge, uh, I think you would have to speak to the crisis management team for the business archives first. But it is interesting to note that if there's a collection which is at dire risk of loss, there might be an opportunity there to, um, to ask for funding from the BAC, which I think is quite cool. Um, they've also undertaken a number of surveys over the years. Um, one example is the Architecture, Building and Construction Records Survey, um, 2011 to 2013. Uh, one of the things they discovered from this survey was that any, many architect, architecture firms hold valuable archives, but perhaps haven't. I think one of the other things they noted was that they had valuable archives that hadn't made their way into an archival repository. So I thought that was quite interesting as well. Um, they also ran a number of COVID-19 lockdown sessions, and these were based on topics. So, for example, one example was a session relating to business archives and one uh, online engagement, and the notes are available on the website. So the notes from each of these sessions are available on our website and can be downloaded. Um, the Business Archives Council have also facilitated a number of academic collaborations over the years. So, for example, one was called Facilitating academic archivist collaborations in business um, and this was a short accessible guide um, with issues and tips to consider when facilitating academic and archivist collaborations in business. Um, they also support the Business History Explorer and I think they have a section on their website dedicated specifically to this and it is quite interesting. So the Business History Explorer is an online bi bibliography relating to the history of UK businesses and industries 
Um, it allows searching by specific topic, and this might include corporate governance or social responsibility or innovation, etc. And it ca apparently contains details of over 50,000 publications and different businesses. So essentially, it seems like a resource that can help someone research the history of a business. And I think the subscription rate for this, I think, is about £35 per year. But it's reduced for Business Archive Council members. But essentially, if you're interested in her business history or you're undertaking a research project, this is something I would highly recommend looking at. Um, they also offer volunteer opportunities, and I think it's really worth getting in touch if interested. Um, personally, I think volunteering can be a great way to gain new skills and learn more about a certain type of collection or a certain type of archival work. And if you're maybe thinking or leaning towards working in a corporate setting, then maybe it's something worth looking at. And it might even just be that you get an idea of the sector or what that sort of type of archiving is like or the contacts you build. It's certainly worth taking a look at. And lastly, you can join as a member. I think the minimum rate for an individual is £35 a year. Um, and this gets you a discount in many of the resources. Um, and it's also worth noting as well that the money goes to supporting business history and research too, and that they are a charity as well. OK, so a quick case study. Uh, in 2019, the international travel firm Thomas Cook went into liquidation. Um, and this liquidation process put their extensive collection of highly valuable archives at risk. Uh, Thomas Cook were founded in 1841, and I believe they had over 300 linear shelf meters of archives that had been used extensively, both by Thomas Cook and external researchers. and when this occurred, there was widespread concern um, voiced by researchers and the archive community, particularly on social media, about what would happen to this highly valuable archival collection. So, in response to this, the Business Archives Council and Crisis Management Team for Business Archives stepped in to negotiate with the official receiver and insolvency firms tasked with winding up Thomas Cook to try and secure the archive's future. Um, the timescale was extremely tight. But they were able to set up the archive services interested in offering the collection a new home were invited to submit a bid by the 22nd of November 2019. Um, the bids were offered by a panel made up of various people, such as representatives from the Business Archives Council, um, the official receiver and the archive and academic communities. And the winner of the bid was the Record Office for Leicestershire and Leicester in Rutland, or R-O-L-L-R. Um, they were informed that they got the collection and they had three weeks to essentially arrange the transfer um, before Thomas Cook had to vac vacate his head office by the end of 2019. So they achieved a, an awful lot of work in a short space of time. And I think this, this, uh, ex this case study says a lot for the value of social media. Um, it's also worth noting that you can read more about this on the Managing Business Archives website that's also linked to the Business Archives Council. I'll put a link for that in the description box below, but essentially that website is designed to be a sort of one-stop shop for advice and guidance for anyone starting out in business archives, including businesses themselves. Um, I think some of the case studies are a bit old, but they're planning to update that section this year and also add a new section in managing digital records to something worth looking at. OK, so I also wanted to give a note on the funding opportunities they offer. So, for example, the BAC Wadsworth Prize is awarded annually by the British Archives Council for a book judged to have made an outstanding contribution to the study of British business history. Um, so, yeah, that's quite interesting. Uh, BAC has also instituted a trust fund, um, the income from which is used to offer annually a bursary for helping an individual to further their research into business history through the study of specific business archives. Um, there is also the BAC cataloging grant for business archives. Um, so uh, presumably this is a grant for cataloging a business collection. I think one of the ones that they provided a grant for was the Sir Freddie Laker archive, which I was looking into, which seemed really interesting. Um, I think they give a, a list of other collections they've provided grants for and it's always interesting to see what other catalogues or what other collections have been catalogued um, and there is also the BAC cataloging grant for business archives relating to sports so for example the BAC announced that the 2020 winner 
of the grant relating to sports was Eastern Bartonshire Leisure and Culture Trust for cataloguing the archive collection of the West of Scotland Football Club. Um, so that's one relating specifically to sport, which I thought was quite cool. Um, and also there was the John Armstrong Award for Transport Archives. And I think this was a special one-off grant um, for, I think, £4,000 um, jointly funded by the late John Armstrong and the BAC. And a winner of this award was the Motorway Trust Archive Collection, which was held by Glam Morgan Archives. So yeah, as I say, they, they also provide a number of funding opportunities. And again, if, if this is something that interests you, I would thoroughly recommend you take another look on our website. Um, certainly, I think in many organisations, funding opportunities is always something that gets a lot of interest. Okay, so there's also an annual conference and a general meeting each year. And it's worth noting that the conferences are themed. And I think this year, in 2020, this conference was centred on enhancing inclusivity and included a calls for papers and ideas. And I think this year the conference was held on Zoom. So yeah, the 2020 conference titled, uh, the 2020 conference was titled, Do the Right Thing, Inclusivity, Equity, and Anti-Racism Within Business Archives. And it's always worth seeing um, what papers are submitted for this and maybe seeing the sort of professionals that get involved with it. Um, in my experiences, these conferences and events can be a fantastic way to find out what other professionals are doing and maybe broaden your knowledge in ways that you might not have done otherwise. Okay, so they also offer a relatively vast library of resources and publications. If you go onto their website, you can look up past newsletters, journals, um, you can look up business collections that have been accessioned, um, and you can also look up annual reports. Um, it's also worth saying that I think their former collection of corporate and sector-based histories and also a unique collection of business pamphlets are available at the Centre of Business History at the University of Glasgow in Scotland. So that's another really interesting thing I liked about their website is that they're really good at sort of archiving their own work and activities. You can actually read their past newsletters and stuff like that, and you, you can see what they've done. And I think as, as a sort of example of self-archiving, <laughs> that's actually quite interesting. And it's useful as well. It's useful to have that knowledge at hand and be able to access that information. OK, so in terms of social media and contact details, so I've said several times that I thoroughly recommend looking at their website. Um, I wouldn't, this video is not a substitute for looking at their website. I would thoroughly recommend you look at their, their website for more information, especially some of which, which may be more up to date. Um, I'm recording this video in late 2020. Uh, by the time it goes live, it's more than possible that they've undertaken other tasks and done other things. So I, I would recommend going and checking their website in the first instance. Um, they also have a Twitter feed. And as mentioned, they have a news section on their website, which goes as far back as 2011. And I think I said that you know you can look up previous you can look up previous newsletters which are accessible in online too. Okay, and and lastly, they also have a really interesting YouTube channel which I highly recommend. Um, their video on being human in the BT archives was particularly interesting. Um, so as I said, the name of the YouTube channel is We Love Business Archives, and I have to honestly say, like um, in my experience as an archivist. These kind of things are absolute gems. Um, like, you know, th they often don't get the the notice and the publicity that they really deserve. And a lot of work goes into it. And there's a lot of really useful knowledge and experience often contained in these type of projects. And, you know, when you find something like this, it, it can be like finding the, the golden needle in the haystack. So I would thoroughly recommend looking at their YouTube channel and also just looking at their website more generally. Um, otherwise, I hope you've really, really enjoyed this video. If you have any further recommendations or ideas, feel more than free to comment in the comment sections below. Thanks again. And lastly, other videos also exist on a range of topics, including short courses, catalogues, and a range of book reviews. Um, I'm also totally open to any ideas or suggestions. And if you also have an idea of, for a video you'd like to create yourself or help edit, then I'd be more than happy to hear about it. Thanks again.